Take that silly thing off your face. You look ridiculous. Rachel narrows her eyes as she adjusts her mask. No, big brother. I feel more comfortable wearing this in here with you. Seriously, I'm not going to kill you. You're 24. Gramps is 82 and he's not concerned. I just want a peaceful Christmas dinner with family, Grandpa John says. I'm staying out of this feud you've started. Tim throws up his hands. I've started. I'm sharing the truth. It's not my fault our family has gone bonkers the last two years. We're not the crazy ones, Rachel says, joining them at the table. You are. I see all the anti-vax garbage you post on Facebook. I'm so embarrassed, but I still came here, stuck on a disgusting plane for five hours. True, you did make the long trip from Cali, Tim says. But now you won't even hug us. You're nuts. I didn't come all this way to be called names. And after the way you treated Mom and Dad, I'm not here for you anyway. I came to see Grandpa. He's vaccinated and only has so many years left. So I took the risk. Hey, I've got plenty of years left. This hot Florida sun has rejuvenated the younger man in me. He twirls his cane. You should see the way I two-step with the ladies on the community center dance floor. Rachel laughs. Sorry, Grandpa. I forget about your youthful confidence sometimes. I know that's why you haven't been scared about the pandemic. Sure, that helps, but this helps more. He points to the wooden cross hanging on the wall. The eternal work of Jesus' sacrifice. That's what keeps me secure in these crazy times. You know I don't believe in that stuff. I believe in science, just like our parents taught us. Tim snickers. Well, your precious science isn't getting you to heaven. It could even stop this virus. You know what the Bible says. Man plans and God laughs. Oh great, so God is laughing at us when millions of people have died from this horrible disease? I don't want to be any part of that God. That's not what it means, Tim says. There's way more to it than that. Don't be so stubborn. Grandpa slams his fork. Tim, come help me in the kitchen. Now. Hey, before I continue on with the story, I just want to say thank you for watching. Make sure you watch to the very end. And if you like the story, make sure you subscribe, click the notification button, and smash that like button so we can share the gospel with more people around the globe. Thanks. Tim follows as Rachel shakes her head. Gramps, what is your pre- Son, you need to do three things for me right now. Close your mouth, look into my eyes, and listen. Tim straightens. You're being way too pushy with your sister. I know you don't agree on a lot of things. Heck, I agree with you more than her. But you know what? You're family. God blessed you with each other for a reason. I know, but... And he also blessed you. He taps on Tim's heart. When you open your eyes to his truth... Rachel hasn't received that gift, at least not yet. You might be the one person God has put into her life to guide her closer to him. To be that shining example of how a young man with, frankly, a very shady past, can be made pure in the eyes of God. I wasn't that shady. But you keep ranting about all these temporary concerns, and you're pushing her away, not only from yourself, but from her Heavenly Father. Your parents are already not talking to you. Do you want the same with Rachel? Do you? No, I don't. Well, then go back in there and be the self-controlled man of God you're supposed to be. I'll do my best, Gramps. Sorry. I know I get carried away and lose sight of what's really important. Happens to the best of us, son. Tim and Grandpa sit. Everything good, Rachel says. Grandpa nods. Now it is. Your brother is a top-notch assistant in the kitchen. Glad to hear he's good at something. Rachel sticks her tongue out at Tim, bulging inside her mask. Tim throws a dinner roll at her. Grandpa smiles. Perfect. We're back to a healthy sibling rivalry. Now let's pray and get to eating. Heavenly Father, thank you for the food you've placed on this table today, and Tim opens one eye. At least Rachel bowed her head. She probably thinks this prayer is useless. But who knows? Maybe she's closer to believing than she lets on. I need to be a better example for her, even though her COVID hysteria drives me crazy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone grabs a fork. Tim goes for his first bite, but stops midair. He winds his eyes to match his dropped jaw. Rachel pulls down her mask, takes a quick bite, and pulls it back up. Tim smiles, his brotherly attempt to hold back a laugh. Bite number two. She does it again. He covers his mouth. Food almost spews out. What's so funny? Rachel says. Nothing, sis. Nothing at all. Distracted by Tim, Rachel brings another forkful of gravy mashed potatoes to her mouth, but this time forgets to pull down her mask. She smushes food all over it. Tim smacks the table as he roars with laughter. Are you kidding me? Rachel stands and throws her napkin. I don't need this. I traveled here when I didn't feel safe doing it, and you've just made fun of me the entire time. Come on, Rachel, you have to admit that was funny. Lighten up. Lighten up? COVID is a serious problem. I'm not going to joke about it, and I was hoping you had changed after your ridiculous fight with Mom and Dad.
but I guess not. Rachel walks to the door and slips on her shoes. Grandpa pleads with her. Sweetie, don't leave. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I love you, but... She looks at Tim. I can't be in the same room with him anymore. For someone who's supposedly a Christian, he's the most judgmental person I know. She walks out. Grandpa shakes his head. I'm not hungry anymore. Tim drops into his chair. Me neither. A month later, Tim's phone rings at home. He stares at the screen. Do I pick up? Hey, Dad. Long time no talk. How you doing? Hello. You there? Hi, Timmy. Not good. It's Rachel. Yeah, what about her? She's still mad at me? Car accident. What accident? Is she okay? Michael sobs. No, she didn't make it. Tim falls to the floor. When did this happen? This morning, a kid was racing with his friend on the highway and crashed into her. The ambulance got her quickly, but she passed at the hospital. I'm so sick of hospitals. What do you mean you're sick of hospitals? We've been waiting to tell you, Timmy. We didn't want to ruin your Christmas. Tell me what? Mom is stage four breast cancer. The doctor gives her three months tops. Now your sister is gone. What am I going to do? Tim looks toward heaven. Dad, give me a second. He sets down his phone, gets up on his knees, and opens his arms. Please forgive me. A tear trickles down his face as God's afternoon sun envelops his body. Okay, Dad, I'm here. For you and for Mom. Whatever you need. I'm sorry.